everyone, Sean Clement here, Wisdom in Golf at the magnificent Royal Quebec Golf Club here in Quebec City. And uh, today we are talking about how to uncollapse your backswing, meaning shorten your backswing. For many of you, it will feel shorter, but because it's uncollapsed, it will be much more powerful, okay? So there's two different areas that we're going to attack insofar as that's concerned. So number one, for many of you trying to reach back to get more power, you end up with a collapsed arm. Now, obviously allowing the lead arm to bend a little is absolutely fine as long as there's some really good tone in that arm. But we don't want to feel any collapse. And the best way to do that is, well, if you were going fishing and you had a long pole, fishing pole, and we're going to cast that fishing pole with both arms. Well, if you do that and let it collapse against you, you'll notice that you're not going to get a lot of these. You're not going to get any velocity and tone through that pole. So what we want is a nice support, some nice tone in there so we can cast that fishing pole you know, deep out into that ocean. So it's the same thing in the golf swing. We're looking for a nice tone, not strain. So for those of you who let it collapse and who let it go, okay? Uh, so have a look at my video, stop letting go in the backswing, that's number one. And then no more collapsing arms, Sean Clement. That's number two. So I'll put that in the, in the description for you for some for more information on that. So we're looking to gather a nice backswing that's going to allow that arm club unit to stay nicely deployed and toned. That tone equals compression, ball speed. Uh, that's where you're going to get your, your spin and that penetrating trajectory. So loosey-goosey hands like, you know, hold the club like a bird, you know, uh, we, uh, we, would be, we would have endangered species on our hands if we were to hold the bird the way we do. We want a secure grip, and as we swing through the ball with that nice tone, we're gonna to be able to generate some wonderful compression with the ball, and that's where you're gonna get that control and that penetrating trajectory. So, you take a backswing and stop. Feel now how we're loading up nicely without collapsing, and feel like if it feels strain, you know, strenuous to you, don't do that either. So, a nice full turn of the body will allow you to do that. A really nice exercise for that is our battering ram drill. So imagine your golf club is a battering ram and you're going to ram it through the door here. So you hold it uh, uh, shoulder width apart and you notice how the club, the arms and the shoulders form a rectangle. So as I go into my backswing, if I don't turn my body, well, my lead arm is going to collapse into my chest and everything is going to collapse. You notice how my right arm is collapsing. But if I allow my body to turn out of the way, see that? Now my arms stay wonderfully extended, both of them. And now I can drive that battering ram through that door. So notice from this angle, the battering ram can move through the door. I'm not letting it scratch the surface of the door. Just because you're turning your body doesn't mean your arms are coming behind you. Your arms are now allowed to stay in front of you. So that's why that drill is so fantastic. So look at Battering Ram Sean Clement on YouTube and you'll really enjoy that. All of these are in detail, of course, on our premium channel at wisdomandgolfpremium.com, okay? So gather, now I've got the wherewithal to have a, a really toned and, and have a nice width. And now I'm going to have a fantastic, you know, velocity in the direction of my target. So you'll notice that I'm very far from parallel, but however, I've got a wonderful full rotation of my body and it feels like I can whip the snot out of it. So we gather, whip through that dandelion stem, 
And then you look at 186 carry with a not with a seven iron, pardon me, not a nine iron. I'm not uh, I'm not Dustin Johnson, but uh, you can see that getting some decent velocity out of the irons is a very easy proposition when there's no breakdown. So that's number one. Number two, the axis that you're swinging around is primo important. So to have access to the target, we need to go in this direction. To have access to the ball, we need to go in this direction. So if your focus is on the ball and the ball is your target, chances are you're doing this. So notice how sloppy this looks. And you can see how the energy is ready to go at the ball. So that would not be good for anything going towards the target. Fantastic, if you want to dig a hole, that's fine. So I need something that's moving along the surface of the grass in the direction of the target. So here's a great way to see this. If I had a hammer in my hands and I wanted to hammer a nail into straight into the ground. So you notice how I am in a position where my body's level or even a little bit more tilted forward. Now I can go ahead and hammer down on something, except the target's over there. So we need to hammer the ball in that direction. So notice as I move here, now I can hammer in this direction. So notice when I stay in that tilted position, I can cut grass along the ground. I can still cut grass along the ground. That's as far as I can go. Now I'm gonna change, I'm gonna go towards ball. Ball, see how I just overswung and just collapsed the whole unit. So this is not the target. This is the intersection on the way to the target over there. So if I keep a very simple task, see this puppy called a grass whip or for some of the states in the US called a sling blade. Nice little movie there, nice tidy little movie. Uh, uh, some mustard on the French fried potatoes, remember that? <laughs> So if I'm cutting grass along the surface of the ground, it looks like that. If I'm cutting grass into the ground, it looks like that. That'll be taking deep divots and I'll probably bend the, 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 the shaft of this unit very, very easily. So I'm cutting through the stem in the direction of the target, in the direction of the target in the direction of the target. Whew, nice. Very, very nice. That was, that felt absolutely awesome. Let me show you that again on the machine here. So going toward the target, still toward the target. Notice my, my, my tilt hasn't changed. Still going toward the target. Tilt hasn't changed. Still going toward the target. So notice because of this tilt, I have a tremendous ability to lag because I'm staying behind and going toward the target. Now, if I lose the tilt, now I'm way out in front of the ball. See that? Now I gotta hurry up and hit the ball before I miss it. Now you're gonna get stuff like this. Reaching back, that's gonna flip the ball in the air. So you're going way out in front, then you're trying to flip at the ball. You gotta hurry up and hit the ball before you miss it. The center of the machine is here where the two, you know, the two shoulders. Here's one arm. This is me cutting grass with one arm. The center of that machine is the shoulder. Put both arms together to take my grip. Now the center is here, the sternal notch between the two clavicles. So from there, cut grass along the ground. If I want to skip a stone on water, it's going to look like this. If I want to throw the stone into the beach, it's going to look like this. <laughs> right? So that's two different purposes. You want to stick it in the mud or you, want to, you don't want to skip that stone. Well, and when we're playing golf, we're going out there. So it feels like the sole of the club is going to skip along the surface of the ground in that direction. So I maintain that and I go through and into that picture. So that gives me 
uh, a f the fabulous ability of getting to my target in that direction. So not bad, a little 179 carry. So we're gathering while maintaining our position. You can't overswing from there. So between the arms not collapsing and the tilt not changing, how do you not change the tilt? Don't change your focus. We're going along the ground, along the ground. You hear that sound? The flight on that is spectacular. So I've got that pin at 180, that's my seven iron, 183 carry, nice launch of 17 and a half. And we're looking at descent angles of 50 degrees, the height of 117 and about a nice thousand RPM left with a nice solid draw, okay? We have a little bit of a crosswind coming this way, so I'm, I'm really working my draw against the wind. So I hope you appreciate this nice video. So have a look at anything tilt, tilt Sean Clement, or head position Sean Clement on YouTube, and it's gonna give you fantastic insight on how to position yourself to not overswing. And an oldie but goodie, uh, there, was, uh, there was one I did uh, back in 2007 called Overswing and Fast Backswing, Sean Clement. And uh, you'll see how consistent the message has been from the beginning. Why? Human body performing task on planet Earth. It doesn't matter whether you're playing baseball, cutting grass, chopping down a tree, or cutting through a dandelion stem, i.e. hitting a golf ball that way. All the best. See you next week.